Welcome to Inside Games, the only gaming news show brave enough to be massively disappointed that a Red Dead Redemption rumor actually turned out to be true. Yeah, hurts these days. We were hearing a lot of chatter about a Red Dead Redemption remaster just a month ago. Surprise! They're true! Sort of. Well, another another surprise. A bad one. Uh, it's not a remaster at all. It's a re-release. And not a great one at that. Uh, the classic 2010 Western from Rockstar Games is coming to the Switch and the PlayStation 4 next week. Yeah, and that's it. <laughs> Rockstar tweeted that the game, along with the Undead Nightmare expansion, Ooh, yeah, uh, will arrive on August 17th and a physical edition will follow on October 13th. All right, so far so good, right? Everybody's excited about it. We're into it. <laughs> Ah, uh, no, never mind. That's not true. The announcement left some people underwhelmed, to say the least. Yeah, we got to balance out our whelms here. It can't be too lopsided. So we got to hear from the most overwhelming staff member, Charlotte. Why do these salty cow pokes got their lassos in a knot? I'm going to take the overwhelming as a compliment. You, you, you should. To sum it up, lots of people feel like Rockstar just rode on by without saying howdy. Damn, that really bends the old horseshoe. Yeah, the announcement was met by ridicule from some gamers who didn't feel like there were nearly enough features to justify the $50 price tag. Over on the game subreddit, the top rated post after the announcement was titled, Do Not Buy Red Dead Redemption. I love when gamers get get in their grassroots. User DTV20 wrote that the game was a $50 port of a 13 year old game with no graphical enhancements, no FPS enhancements, and no multiplayer. Hey, wait, now I'm getting mad. Uh, if you want a proper remake slash remaster, then don't buy this cash grab, they added. The announcement was immediately memed to death with folks on Twitter making fun of the impending release. I'm sorry. <laughs> with folks on X making fun of the impending release. <laughs> and speaking of fairness, we ought to mention, even though people really like to grab on and say that there were no graphical updates, there kind of are. It does have some, you know, admittedly modest graphical improvements. Oh, okay, all right. Well, it's not full remake territory. The game will probably run at 4K 30 FPS on PS4 uh, based on that YouTube trailer. Uh, with what appears to be improved lighting, shadows, and LOD distances. That means it'll probably run in PS4 Pro mode on PS5. So you'll still get most of that. But uh, that's that's it, though, for 50 bucks. $50. Man, oh man. Others pointed out that the game's actually been available for years in 4K at a much cheaper price. Uh, we will reveal where after this quick message from our sponsor, Factor. Today's episode of Inside Games is sponsored by Factor, which uh, we're getting into a heavy release season and Factor is gonna be the gamer's real secret weapon. We got Starfield, we got Spider-Man 2. Who's got time to meal prep or or even worse, call a delivery service? With Factor, you can go right to your fridge and pick from just a stack of delicious meals ready in minutes. You can work on those Spider-Man abs along the way too, because Factor offers meal preferences like keto, calorie smart, vegan, and vegetarian. That on top of 27 plus meal options each week means you'll never put a meal you don't like around your waistline. In addition to over 27 meal options, Factor also offers over 36 add-ons. We're talking smoothies, keto shakes, desserts, and more. So finish your meal with something a little nice or give yourself something lean to spread out those meals a little bit Get those abs popping for Spider-Man. You got all your meals and food DLC right on the side, all in one convenient shipment. So get ready for the most stacked fall season in gaming I think we've ever seen. Use our link in the description or go to go.factor75.com and use code POGINSIDE, AUG50 for 50% 50 off your first box. Or new tech here, scan the QR code with your phone and let it whisk you away to convenient and healthy meals. Thank you very much for the sponsorship factor. Welcome back everyone. Picking up where we left off in the story, helpful Redditors pointed out that Xbox consoles can already play Red Dead and its DLC for a much cheaper price. Yeah, user PHL Dirtbag wrote, I bought the Game of the Year edition for $10 to play at 4K on my One X. $50 for a simple port on a 13 year old game is something else. Others wonder why there wasn't a PC release for Red Dead, which is universally acknowledged as a modern day classic. Mm -hmm. uh, that begs the question, why isn't the game coming out on PC? Yeah, if they're porting to PS4 and a Switch, surely surely PC isn't that far away. Uh, it could have something to do with just the absolute roasting that Rockstar got a few years ago over the GTA trilogy, the remaster on pretty much every platform. Yeah, if you'll recall, the trilogy 
which was just a port at that point, was widely panned in 2021 after it was released in an extremely buggy state. A follow-up patch, because there's usually one of those, fixed more than a hundred bugs like blinding sheets of rain that made the game nearly unplayable. I, I got it for free and it couldn't even launch. Yeah, I did too. Yeah. <laughs> I, got, I got a yeah. press copy and it wouldn't even start, so I was like, mm, I guess I'm not <laughs> playing it. Uh, so it could be a situation where Rockstar decided that a PC port for Red Dead was not worth the hassle and the memeing and the insults. <laughs> Speaking in stereotypes now, because this is kind of all theory anyway, it's just typically more difficult to develop for compared to the lock hardware specs and the more developed or the more dedicated developer tools for console platforms like the Switch and PS4. So they may have just cut it out of the budget. Why worry about it? Instead of building for 200 platforms, we'll just build for two. Yeah, Rockstar's greatest controversy and one of gaming's biggest was even due to data mining a PC port. Yes, the infamous hot coffee incident all started with a mini game that modders discovered and made playable once the game released on PC. And it was very hot. <laughs> Granted, this was almost 20 years ago at this point, but getting dragged into court tends to stick with a company. Yeah, even Rockstar's recent years in the news really haven't been so great. After Red Dead Redemption 2 launched in late 2018, there was a big scandal, a lot of blog articles rather, over crunch conditions at Rockstar, especially during the game's last year of development. Rockstar co-founder Dan Hauser drew criticism for an interview where he said the staff was working 100 hour weeks during the lead up to the game. It's so crazy that only five years ago, that was like a boast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Catch a game director saying that voluntarily now. Uh, that ultimately didn't affect the reception of the game, which like the first Red Dead got glowing reviews from critics and lands among gaming's all time best sellers at 53 million copies. However, Kotaku claimed in a follow up report that Rockstar had pivoted its internal culture away from crunch which suggests that Rockstar is sensitive to how it's being covered in the media. Yeah, or they realized they couldn't just ignore their conscience anymore. <laughs> I think it's one of those things where most companies probably knew it wasn't sustainable, but they were going to do it until there was an outcry. And as soon as they knew that the free work was up, it was time to reel it in. So who knows? Uh, this is potentially an instance of the company changing course because of online reception and in games media reception. Uh, so maybe that's why they just decided to stay away from PC, thinking it would just be a meme factory and everyone makes fun of them again. But then again, you know, flipping a bare bones port for 50 bucks doesn't exactly say that they really care about what the gamer on the street thinks. Because uh, that's that's a pretty quick money making move. So that's where we're at, though. What do y'all think? Do you have a dark theory about why Rockstar is still not releasing this game on PC? In, in short, no. But um, from every decision that Rockstar has made from like for the time being canning the Red Dead next gen update, or Red Dead 2, I should say, to this and no PC thing. It seems like kind of like they're sparing very few resources for anything outside of the next GTA entry, uh, which we haven't really heard much of anything aside from leaks like years ago. So uh, I, I don't know. I don't know what the teams on this uh, remaster or re-release look like, but it just sounds maybe unrealistic given where their priorities lie. Totally agree. And uh, this entire story basically came from me messaging Lawrence last night being like, because I read the headline, hey, Red Dead, the uh, Red Dead re-release uh, re re or whatever is only on PlayStation 4 and Switch. And I was like, why didn't they put it on PC? And the first thing I thought of was like, they don't want to take shit. They don't want to take shit from, from the PC gamers because they know it's going to be constantly memed and shit on. And if they release it on PS4 and Switch, that's for the casuals. That's the casuals are going to buy it and play it or not. And then if it's broken, they're not going to say anything. They're, no one, no one, PlayStation 4 and Switch gamers are way less demanding than PC players uh, for good or for bad. Um, so I just think they didn't want to deal with it. And like Charlotte said, if they have a bunch of people on another team, they only have five dudes making this thing, then they're just going to throw it on these two platforms and be like, well, we made a couple hundred, you know, couple 50 million or whatever. And we're good. Yeah, I think you're right. I think there's not a lot of reason for them to invest massively in a remake because people will buy it anyway. It's one of those. I mean, I was kind of casually scrolling through some of the Reddit threads and it was like, there were a fair amount of people just being like, I'm going to buy it. I don't care. Like, <laughs> Who cares? They got me. And it's that good of a game and it's that well made in the first place. So I don't know that it really needs that much of a retouch, even though it would be nice. But yeah, I think they'll get another $50 out of people. No problem. Which means from a business perspective, it was the right call. Uh, 
I will say though. I mean, that's the Nintendo Switch. Ah, dang, I'll buy it. And I guess I'll pay too much for it, yeah. Yeah. God, the Switch and the PS4, it's the install bases on those platforms are huge. So it's like, it's not much money to develop for a locked spec that gets you access to 200 million more potential sales for 50 bucks each. Oh man, that's the profit on that project is gonna be huge. Just speaking selfishly, I do wish it were coming out on PC because that means the memes would be better. Uh, and ah, we'll see. I think this this version is probably going to be a lot more polished up than the GTA trilogy was. But uh, yeah, I don't know. On PC in general, we're generally the beneficiaries of the community. So even if it launched buggy, I'm sure that the community would fix it, which, you know, people like to censure leaning on that or assuming or I guess assuming that companies do that. But that means we still get to play a like fixed version of the game for basically free on our chosen platform. So I don't know. The bottom line is I always got a lot of fixed ports because of it. Uh, you know, I try to throw my money at whatever, whoever's coffee that happens to fix the game, but I don't know. Uh, it'll be out on Yuzu basically. And I'm sure it'll have like a 60 FPS patch within the week. So it is kind of on PC. If you think about it, <laughs> everything's on PC. If you think about it, um, <laughs> hey, these patrons, these people support the Inside Games Patreon. They allow us to make these videos every single week. And these patrons would never ride on by without saying howdy! Christian Morgan Anderson, Ryan Derryberry, Brian Causer, Kyle Heaton, and Mason Hoover. Uh, Bruce, I've got some patrons that have thrown a lasso completely around my heart. <laughs> Crab Foam, Christopher Glavin, Charles Gard, Nightboard, and Xander. Take me away. You've rustled me. Oh, that's so nice. And before we go, here's the best meme on the internet. That's right. We're saying it here. The best meme on the internet created by Kino Fubino and curated by Inside Games. Uh, thanks again for your support and consider contributing to the Patreon to fuel art with a capital A like this. <laughs>